welcome to Chapter 2 Club, Smart Woman's Guide to Breakups and Everything After. Today, I'm here with Lisa Ziderman, matrimonial and family law attorney and managing partner of Miller Ziderman, and she's going to be talking about wasteful dissipation of assets. Welcome, Lisa. Hi, so nice to be here with you. Nice to have you. Let's jump right in. Well, so wasteful dissipation of assets relates to the use of assets for expenses that are other than marital. What does that mean? It may mean um, expenses for a paramour, a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Could mean expenses for a gambling issue or for substance abuse reasons. And what we find very often is that people have misused the family monies. And when I say the family monies, the earnings that the family has actually earned during the marriage, monies that have been accrued in retirement accounts or bank accounts, and they have used them for their own personal pleasures. Now, it's fine to use monies for, you know, you go out and you, you and your wife or you and your husband have a trip and you go to a casino and you have some fun or you decide that you're going to take an expensive trip, all terrific. But when you are actually taking that luxurious trip with someone other than your spouse, that becomes a dissipation of an asset. And when I say someone other than a spouse, I'm not talking about your child or your mom or your dad. I'm talking about when you decided to take your girlfriend or your boyfriend away for a great luxurious trip or many of them. Some of our cases, we have found literally millions of dollars that have been wastefully dissipated. And the question becomes, how do you find it? Mm -hmm. And what do you do when you find it? So one way is discovery. And as part of what we do in a divorce and matrimonial matter is we ask for the bank account statements, credit card statements, retirement account statements. And essentially, if there are businesses, those statements, QuickBooks, et cetera, so that we can see where the monies have gone during the last five years, the last seven years, if it becomes something that is questionable. And if we are starting to see a trend where there are huge cash withdrawals or transfers being made or credit cards showing wonderful trips, except that one of the spouses has not been on those trips and it wasn't for business and great dinners out, but one of the spouses wasn't with you and it wasn't for business, then we start to, to actually keep a running total of that because at least usually half of that can be put into the marital pot to be divided again. Oh, wow. That's, I did not know that. So, you know, we have had clients who have come to us and have said, you know, I think that um, my husband or my wife has been having an affair and I think that they have been spending money. And in some cases it has been millions of dollars of monies, presents, um, you know, wonderful jewelry that might have been bought for someone who was not a spouse, watches, yeah. great trips, handbags, all sorts of wonderful, you know, trinkets, etc. that needs to be added back into the marital pot. Look, we're in a no-fault state in New York. So bottom line is, it's not really about the fact that you've had the affair. The question is, how much have you spent on the affair? Right. It's not that you that anybody is criticizing you for gambling, although if you have a gambling addiction, you should get help right. because that is really a horrendous addiction to have. Yeah. Um, but if, if your spouse wasn't consenting to that, if that wasn't part of what you did as a married couple, then that money may need to go back into the pot to be divided. Yeah, totally agree. Let me ask you this question. Post-divorce, you've got your you know marriage settlement agreement set up, and let's say your ex tries to reduce your alimony, um, saying that his salary has decreased or whatever, but then you realize that he's been spending all this money on his new spouse or whatever. Does that help or not after you've already finalized a divorce? So if someone is trying to reduce their support payment, whether it be alimony or child support, mm -hmm. it absolutely is important to look at the lifestyle that they are living. Right. And whether or not that, that reduction in income that they are claiming is legitimate. Right. And if they're able to be spending 
at the same level or above as before, then you really need to look closely and find out why. It's much of what we do is about discovery. Mm -hmm. It's about getting documents and looking through the documents. It may be about taking a deposition. It's about asking good questions Mm -hmm. and making sure that you understand the finances, whether it be for a support reduction or a support increase or some other issue that is pending um, in terms of whether it be after, during, or, um, or, you know, later in the divorce action. Okay, great. Good to know. Thank you. This is, these are very good insights and tips, and I hope our audience out there can appreciate them as well. And you can find more information about Lisa on her website at mzwnylaw.com or on our website at chapter2club.com. Lisa, thank you so much for being here with us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much.